I've seen it, but I haven't done any checking on it. This is where you finalize everything, is right here on the anvil, huh? For the fine tuning? Yeah, depends. Yeah, depends what we're doing. And this is what again? This is uh What do we call this beast? A forging hammer. Forging hammer. Hydraulically controlled. How many tons does this thing put in when it's it hammers? It's not hydraulic, it's pneumatic. Oh, pneumatic? Yeah. Oh, it air. It used to run on steam. Wow. But now it runs on air. And what, is, what do we call this thing? It's a Chambersburg Utility Hammer. Chambersburg Engineering Company, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Yep. And what do they call it again? This one's called a Utility Hammer. Utility Hammer. We're going to take this piece of round bar and turn it into what? Well, I've got a little short taper on the end of it. And then neck it down. So it'll end up being you know, like a... Kind of like a... Like a pear shape. And then you just beat it to death inside the hammer ends here, huh? Well, yeah, not to death, but mostly. Shape it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Shape it. So, and where's the uh, control? Right, right there. there. Okay, that's the control. Look at that thing go. Now, how does it get all the way down then? Well, it depends on how much I step on the lever. Oh, okay. Put on there to help control it, right? Yeah. So he just puts his foot right here. Yep. You gotta push down a little bit and then you'll see. It'll lift up. Yeah, there you go. And then. Oh. I see. So you can actually drop it? Well, yes, it can be operated in single blow mode, but mostly this is gonna be operated. Okay. That's where it's okay. set now. So over here I have, this is how it controls my stroke. So, oh, okay. You know, I can, right now I have it up about here, so it's about middle of the stroke, so I can still use tools under it. Down here I can make it so that it cycles down near the bottom, and then up here I can make it so it cycles up a lot higher. Up a lot higher. Now would that increase the impact on this then, if you go higher? Um, basically, what increases the impact is if the air valve totally open. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So and that's your catch can for your oil? Uh, yeah, for right at the moment, yeah. Now, this is the main air valve. This is the your throttle. So, I can drive it like this, too. I can crack this valve. Oh, okay. And I can control it like this. You know? Okay. Somebody else is holding the piece, and I just needed to do kind of like a stamping operation. So what's this little uh, thingy that's a, here? That's the oiler. Oh, this is the oiler for yeah. the cylinder then? Yeah. Okay, so you just crank that to pump oil into it then? or? Yeah, it, uh, it automatically does. Okay. It's hooked up to this arm on the, it, the uh, motion control. Okay. So that it just, you can watch here while cycling it, so... I got the screw in this So. Okay, I see it cycling. Yeah. So it's pumping the oil in then. Yeah, it's just a little uh, rod turning around. Yep. Yeah. It's like just a little gear driven thing. So, how much oil is this thing using any given time? Uh, not, not a whole lot every eight hours or something like that, huh? Not even. Not really. even? But maybe a quart, yeah. How many PSI air does this thing handle? Right now it's about 95. 95? 
what, it doesn't use a high pressure, it uses a high volume of air. Oh, okay, that's why you got the large, uh, yeah. large uh, air, air feed to it. Yeah, it was... What was that, about what? A, it's one inch airline. One inch airline. It's at one and a quarter feeds it down to here to the regulator, and then it gets neck down to uh, one inch. And it just goes right into it, and by golly, then we got the off valve on there. So, and then of course that's the uh, muffler, right? Yeah. That's, uh, you, you know, and these have to have a muffler in order to keep the sound down, otherwise it gets pretty loud. It's not terrible. The big ones are really loud. Yeah. This is really, as far as these goes, it's a small one. Well, that's got to be the biggest catch can I ever saw on an engine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five gallon bucket. Wow, folks. <laughs> that, that thing's was, uh, pretty let's neat. Let's hurry up and get something on there. Okay. <laughs> Then you gotta just keep heating that up over and over again then. Yeah. Going to a point on that then or? Uh, yeah, blunt point. Blunt point? Yeah. And what's that gonna be used for? It's actually gonna be a finial for the two little scrolls. Are gonna go together like this. In the center is going to be like this little, almost like a flower bud type thing. Oh, and that's okay. What that's going to be. And it's going to be welded right into here. Yeah, and then a collar will go around where the weld is, so you. Just, it'll oh, look like okay. Traditional. Okay, so this this is decorative uh, metal smithing then. Yeah, yeah. This is for the bank. We're making a new sign. Here's this is one of the larger ones that that'll go. Uh, it's the prototype. Are you for you, the other side? You bent that on this too? I forged all the tapers and then I bent them by hand. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, I have little fixtures that I made. Like here's here's the small end. Okay. You know, put a vice grip on here and then wrap it around. Once I get my material tapered. And that, and then, okay. So you just hammer it down and then you bend it on the on the metal bender. Well, right here's my metal bender. That's your metal bender? <laughs> yeah. And my forged uh, bending fork. So it just goes like, oh, okay. around there. So, yeah, you're strong, man, if you can bend it with just that little bar right there. Of course, it's probably hot when you do it. Yeah, it's like putty. Right? <laughs> you're not doing it cold. Otherwise, you'd have arms the size of, the, yeah. size of King Kong, right? Exactly. <laughs> pretty, pretty deep. Well, by golly. I'm going to go this is that called a fuller tool. It's a spring fuller. So this will enable me to neck down both sides of that bar at the same time and then spin it. So oh, okay, I've I'm seen that. I've material. seen that, yeah. Yeah. They do that on uh, some big forgers like that, big hammers, yeah. I've seen them do it. They take a piece and then they put it, turn it and, and get it on yep. both sides going down. Yep. The guy that I learned to do this power hammer forging from had, uh, when, when I met him, he had worked in a big forge shop for 45 years. Wow. And he taught me basically everything that, that I know about working with a power hammer. And, uh, you know, I, I still review the video and find stuff in it after 20 years. You know? Oh, wow. <laughs> but it's like 85 years old. The, the, the thing is, this type of stuff that you're doing is, this here, in everything that I've ever learned, is, is, is the money maker. Yeah. People pay good for this type of metalwork. Yes. Uh, Not so much in Iowa. But, but, you know, 
a lot of the bigger commissions I've done have been in Chicago. Yeah. You know, yeah. Point, there's a couple people that that you know I've done some really high end work for, but in general, it's uh, rich, you know, banker guys. Yeah, they, I I've I've heard that, that you know that is the that's where the money maker is. is it? It's custom bending, hand forging. But it takes more time, though, too. So that's the thing, is, you know, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of detail where you're good work. And so... And it ain't like I could go in there and hammer it and create anything crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we'd be lucky if we could make it look like anything other than a flat piece of metal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be about it. I have a, you know... I, didn't, I haven't done much of it over the last 10 years, but, you know, from the mid-90s to the early 2000s, is when I was really busy doing a lot of this kind of work. Basically all sorts of little tools here. What does this one do? This one is basically is a, what's called a ball fuller, and this enables me to, to draw out metal in 360 degrees. So when I'm, you know, when the metal's hot and I push down here, it's spreading the metal out. Creating an opening on the in the in the metal. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's creating a, a round dimple, kind of okay. like a ball peen hammer effect, but okay. in a much more smaller area. And then this is this here is a, just kind of a straight line fuller. So this is just going to move material, you know, this way, okay. side to side. Where this way moves it all the way around. Oh, okay. Okay. Just punch holes into it or dimple it or whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. I've got other ones for actually making holes. Interesting stuff. Yeah. These are just some previous works. Yeah, they're just like tongs halfway roughed out. I make them as I go. Which ones I need. Uh, here's some other, uh, another little scroll form that I was working on. You know, so I can bend it around that. This is another piece that uh, I got to finish off. This is a, a scroll starting form. And uh, what else? So far, I've made just about all the tools, you know. Little made just about everything, except for the hammer, right? You didn't yeah. make the hammer, did you? Not that one, no, yeah. but I've got some that I started that I... That I, I think I saw one day, I saw something where you're yeah. making a hammer. Put your iPad right here. Okay. Here's oh, okay. Your own sledgehammer. Yeah, that's about a five-pound hand hammer. This will be end up being a mini anvil when uh, once I get you know finished working on it. I don't work. I work on this on my own time, not on company time. Oh, okay. So now, what temperature does this get up to? Oh, easily seven hundred. But normally we work around two thousand. So. You're waiting for this to get to that temperature then, or? Um, I'm going by color mostly right now, and we are, yeah, we're about 1800, 1900 right now. See, I'm going to show you what I was talking about with this earlier.
Thank you for watching MacT's videos and remember to like and subscribe.